converting from a number of grams to a number of molecules is a simple two-step process. First, you've got to convert grams to moles, which is a measure of the quantity of how many things are there. The way that you do that conversion is to divide by the molar mass of the compound itself. Then once you have moles, it's easy to convert to molecules. You'll multiply, or times, by 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. That's Avogadro's number. Now we're going to use this process together to convert 67.8 grams of xenon tetrafluoride, that's XeF4, to a number of molecules. Step one, convert the grams you were given to moles by dividing by the molar mass. But we have to figure out what the molar mass is first. Molar mass is written with a capital M, and you get it by adding up the atomic masses of each of the elements that make it up on the periodic table. According to this table, Xe weighs 131.293, and in this molecule there are four fluorines. Each fluorine weighs 18.293. Now, you may have a different periodic table that has slightly different numbers here, depending on how they're rounded. Use the table you're given. It'll be great. Now, you got to do this on your calculator. I got 131.293 plus 4 times 18.998. Bam. I get a total of 207.285. And the units on molar mass is grams per mole. Now, in terms of significant figures, I want to point out that when you're adding things together, you're using the fewest number of decimal places that you use. There's one, two, three decimal places here, one, two, three decimal places here. And so I'm allowed to use one, two, three decimal places here. This is written with significant figures. That's good. But let's not forget what we're doing. I'm converting grams to moles by dividing by molar mass. Now, the number of moles is usually written with little n, and you'll take the number of grams divided by molar mass. Your teacher may have given you a formula like this. What it really means is you're taking the number of grams, 67.8 in this case, and dividing it by whatever molar mass you calculated in the previous step. Now, I'm also writing my units in case your teacher asks for that, but it's the division here that truly matters. 67.8 divided by that answer. That's 0.327. Now, I'm going to keep a couple extra decimal places here. I'm going to round at the very end, but uh, one, two, three significant figures mean three significant figures for the final answer once I get there. Uh, I'm going to go 709. I'm going to take five figures for now. Now, this is in actual number of moles. We've already finished step one, convert grams to moles by dividing by molar mass. Now we convert moles to molecules by timesing by Avogadro's number. Now there's a formula for that as well. The number of molecules is the number of moles times Avogadro's number. Capital N is number of molecules. Capital N with a little subscript A is the very special Avogadro's number, the number of particles in a mole of something. What we have is 0 0.32709 moles of stuff, and we are going to times it by 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. Now, the units on that, if you have to write some, is molecules per mole. It's the count of how many things there are in a mole of something. But again, it's the multiplication that matters, times 6.022. Now, the way I write times 10 to the power of on my calculator is with this button EXP. Yours might be capital E, capital E, or you can physically write times 10 to the power of. But this EXP button does that for me. This capital E means times 10 to the power of 23. There we go. My final answer here is 1.9697 times 10 to the power of 23. Note that this calculator says times 1023. 
your calculator might have a capital E and then the 23 written, that means times 10 to the power of. Now this is the number of molecules, but again, I'm gonna do significant figures for you. This number, the molar mass had six significant figures because remember we used three decimal places. That's a lot. Let's compare it to 67.8, another number we were given that only has three significant figures, one, two, three. This number, Avogadro's number, the rounded the way that I had it is one, two, three, four significant figures. The fewest of all of those is three. So I need to chop this down to three significant figures. One, two, three. That's the third one. I'm going to look at the number that comes after it. It's bigger than five. So this number has to get rounded up. What that means is that my final answer is 1.97 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules. That seven there has nothing to do with this seven here. It's about the fact that this is my last and final significant figure, and the bit that comes after it means we're rounding it up. Six becomes seven when you round up. But anyways, there's your final answer. And what really matters for this video is that converting grams to mole is easy, as long as you can convert gram, sorry, grams to molecules is easy, as long as you convert grams to moles by dividing by molar mass and converting that same number of moles to molecules by timesing by Avogadro's number. Thanks for being with me. Hopefully this simplifies your calculations and life. Best of luck.